Hello, welcome to Scratch Theory Printing. In this video, we're going to be looking at this seam. Let's scratch today's topic. First, I would like to talk about seam. What is a seam on a 3D printed part? I've been surfing through Reddit and some other social media. Some people are still confused what a seam is. They're saying that why is my 3D printed part have this line here? What is this or how do I get rid of it? Well, a seam is where your 3D printer starts and ends. The nozzle starts here, it goes around, and it ends here, and then moves to the next layer. That is how a seam is created. Are there ways to get rid of seams? Yes, there are definitely ways to get rid of seams. 3D slashers these days are pretty good of trying to remove the seam as much as possible, but I found that um, workout slicers like the best one, so that's the one I use, workout slicers, the one that I use, and I will show you my setting of how I got almost got rid of the seam. To be honest, you can't never really get rid of seams on 3D printed parts. It will always be there unless there's like a special cool way of doing it. But to my knowledge, the seam is always gonna be there. And here, let me show you a couple parts here that I print changing the setting on Orga Slicer. Many of you guys are saying that stop showing on camera and do it on the front facing camera. So here we go. This is what I'm gonna do today. This one right here is just a normal seam going from bottom to the top. This is the second one that I try and if you look very closely right here, you can see that there's almost two seams right there. Um, I changed the gap of when the seam starts and ends. So essentially it starts right here and ends over here. So there's a small gap when the seam starts and ends. And it's still not as good as I wanted to. So these two here are like out of the question. You can really feel the bump here. I use my fingernail, you can put the bump there. And then I use the new scarf joint seam. Um, as you can see here, it has a seam right here, but then it also has another staggered seam over here that it goes with the body of this cone shape. It starts right here and it goes like that. So it has two seams. So for this, I'll show you on Orca slicers, but for this, it starts right here, extruding a small amount of filament and then go right here and to here, then it just extrude normally throughout the whole thing. So then I adjust some more setting and this one is a little bit better as you can see there. The bottom here has seams, right? But towards the top here, it's more smooth. I can barely feel the seam here, but the bottom here, you can still feel the seam and it also has a stagger seam over here. So it's getting a little bit better and better than this one here gets a lot better. Almost halfway throughout the top is like very smooth. So I was like, how is this possible? Why is the bottom so bad, but the top so good? And then I look at work assessor step by step of how this was printed and I finally figure out what that was. This last cone right here is the best that I have gotten with the scarf joint seam. You can see that these two are very identical, but this one in real life, the seam here is still way too big for my liking. This one here, you can see the seam, but it is very smooth on the seam right here. And yeah, it still have the stagger seam. But if you look very closely on this particular one right here, you can see that right here in this area is a little bit darker and the outer area here is a lot lighter so you may also wonder how is that possible but that would be another video it has something to do with printing speed so if you want to watch that video make sure to subscribe to the channel because i will be making a video on that but anyway back to the seam here this one is very nice very smooth you can barely feel the seam and it just followed the cone shape very smoothly so now i'll show you on orca slicers my setting what i change and all the good stuff okay we are in orca slicers right now i'm gonna click slice plate and let's take a look at this as you can see here the white part here is the seam if we look at the key here that is the seam the white part and if we scroll down like halfway here um let's scroll this back and like i said the seam is where it starts right here and ends at the same spot and that creates a seam right there it's gonna repeat this throughout the whole thing and at the end of the print you're gonna have this bump seam right here for your 3d printed parts the normal setting on quality here for me is online uh, stagger inner seam is nothing 
seam gap is 10%. If you increase this, it's going to increase the gap of the seam, which you don't want to increase very much like that. I set it to 10 millimeter and it has a 10 millimeter gap. So essentially you don't have a seam anymore. So you got to play around with that number. If you don't want to change anything, try changing that number and it does not even finish the top. So just leave that at 10% or whatever number you have tuned with. Scarf Twin Seam is beta. It has been out for a while now and the default is set to none. Here is what I have changed for mine. I will show you right now what I have changed. So for the best seam that I made, stagger inner seam, I checked that box because it's going to stagger and shift it backward a little bit. The seam gap, I used 35%. Make sure you put the percentage sign. If not, it will think that you meant 35 millimeter. And then for the scarf joint, I use contour, or you can use contour hole. If your part has a hole in the middle, it's gonna use scarf joint seam. But for this model, I'm just gonna use contour. Scarf joint speed, that is very important, but I'm gonna slice the plates right now and show you guys what that is. Look at that. We essentially don't have a seam at all. And I will show you what I mean by this gap here. You can definitely see that this gap is a little bit darker and you can kind of see there's like a stagger seam over here. So I'll show you how that works. If we scroll the timeline back here, right here, you can see that it starts the outer layer very small. That is a very, very small layer. And if we keep going right there, Right there, it start extruding normally. And then it will just keep continuing to do this throughout the whole thing. And it also overlaps the small seam that it starts over here. So you might think that hey, the seam is going to be here and here and over here, but no. This is very small, so it just cover over it and it's very smooth. You don't even know that there's like a line there. And if we keep going, it's going to overlap this part too. And it just keep going. Keep, it's going to keep going until it finishes. And then it will continue doing the end field. This does cost you a little bit more time. But the finished product is going to be so much more better than just using the normal seam. And I also changed one more thing in the speed setting. If we scroll all the way down, extrusion rate smoothing. For this, I put it to 100 millimeters. Because if you read this, it's kind of confusing, but at the same time, it kind of makes sense. So you can go ahead and read that. I'm not going to bore you. I just put a hundred millimeter here. And then for the length, I use five. And I only apply this to the external feature. Basically, I just want the seam to be as bad as possible. So that is my setting for this event setting on the speeder. So if we slice paint again, there's not much that changes by doing this extrusion rate smoothing here, but I kind of noticed when it's finished. One more thing that I want to go over is the speeder. If we go and check the speed right here, you can see that on top here, it's very blue. And if we look at the key, that means that it's printing at 16 millimeters per second. So like how I showed you the other one, the top part is smooth, but the bottom part is rough. It's this right here. It's just that the bottom part print a little bit faster and extrude more filament. So it's going to have a rougher seam to it. But in order to change that, just change the seam only. We can go to the quality and change right here, scarf joint speed. So for me, I change it to 20% because I want the scarf to be as good as possible. Once we click slice, you can see that right here. At the bottom here, it still shows green and then goes to dark blue means that it print fast at the bottom and print slower. But just this part right here, the scarf joint seam right here, only this part slows down. So it prints fast and then once it reach the seam, it slows down and smoothly extrude so that you can get the best seam possible. And this is the best way I found to hide the seam. Okay, as you saw right there, there's not that much setting that needs to be changed, only a couple of settings, but you need to tweak them, changing the speed, changing the percentage of how you want the seam to be built essentially like that. And like I said, this one is the best one that I made with scarf joint seam and using the setting that I show you guys. So give it a try. Let me know in the comments down below how it goes for you. If you find a way of doing seams better than this, definitely let me know. I would love to try your setting and see if we can get rid of the seam completely. But that'll be it for this video. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to become a member of the YouTube channel. It definitely helps me a lot funding more projects in the future. So thank you so much to everyone that has supported me up until now. And 
don't worry, more video is definitely coming your way. And as always, keep on 3D printing.